चलिए दोस्तों शुरू करते हैं विदाउट वेस्टिंग ए टाइम टूडे विल सी हाउ टू कॉन्फिगर द वीपीसी इन एसीआई इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड हाउ टू कॉन्फिगर एल3 आउट इन द एसीआई सो फॉर द क्विक रीकैप आई हैव पुट दिस टोपोलॉजी आल्सो व्हिच इज द नॉन एसीआई सो हियर वी हैव एन टू एन एक्सेस 7 के एक्सेस 7 के वन एन एक्सेस 7 के टू डिवाइस सो दिस इज द डाउनस्ट्रीम डिवाइस विद अ विंडो सर्वर इट्स ड्यूल होम टू द टू इज कनेक्टेड विद द टू एन एक्सेस व्हिच इज so logically this device will think as a two device these two devices as a single device or so this is the overall concept of the vpc in the standalone action in order to configure the vpc we configure vpc domain and then we have to configure the two type of link also between the peer devices vpc and access key to an access key devices one is the vpc peer keep live link and this link is the l3 link and this link used to check the heartbeat of uh, both the devices other devices up or not okay and second thing link you use second link you use the vpc peer link this is a pure l2 link and this is for the synchronization of mac addresses and the control plane information and this link you use a uh, cfs cisco fabric services as a protocol to do this okay this is how look like vpc in the annexes okay so this post is not related uh, not i am not going to explain the deep vpc how the vpc and what the vpc failure scenario so this was the quick recap how it look like in the annexes seven case and this is the fabric for the aci which i have only took the two leaf and uh, i have an a two spine and one aptic only monitor so here you see uh, this will how it look like in the vpc in the case of aci vpc so again this is the same device we have in a window server which is connected with the two devices two leaf leaf 101 and leaf 102 and it's on dual home And still, this device will think as a both the devices as a single device. So it will see uh, it will connected a only one device. Although physically it's connected to the two separate devices. Major difference if we talk about with respect to an Access Seven K VPC and in case of ACI, it's specific to ACI. There is no peer link between the VPC peer instead of fabric itself as a multi chassis link. Means it means to say that there is no VPC peer link will be there in the ACI. Okay. All fabric, so all fabric is acting as a multi-chassis tracking link. So tracking link. And second thing is uh, we were using that for the peer reachability. Uh, we here uh, in the case of an access and VPC, we are using the Cisco Fabric Service Protocol. Now in the ACA, there is new protocol introduced that is the JDMQ. So this protocol again use the TCP stack for the transmission. And it's also as there is no physical link there is no physical peer link and this will be uh, physical peer reachability will be handled by the uh, detect the peer reachability will be have to route overall there is no uh, as we can see that there is no physical connectivity there is no physical peer link specific link dedicated link in the case of aci so peer reachability will be handled by the uh, not handled by the physical peer link instead uh, routing trigger are used to detect the peer reachability so if something happen So as we know behind the scene in the ISIS to get the reachability in the loopbacks, uh, we use a ISIS is routing protocol. So that ISIS protocol will uh, will handle this peer uh, reachability case if something happen with the reachability. So this is our solution document which we are going to use to configure the VPC in the ACI. So I put it the few parameters again all of the object name I put it. So let me quickly go through that. Just in the one second. Okay, here it is. So first we'll go for the VLAN pool. VLAN pool name we have took the infra, and then we proceed with this VLAN range, hundred to two hundred VLAN range we use in the case of VPC. And this is the name we will define the physical domain. Then we go proceed for the AAP. This is the AAP name we'll be use. Okay. And once we're done with the in the fabric access policy with the VLAN pool and range and physical domain infra, then we proceed for the IPG interface policy group. Once we're done with the IPG, in the IPG we'll attach the AEP and we'll also attach the individual policy like CDPO, LDPO, nuclear policy. We can do that. And after that, we proceed for the interface profile. Under the interface profile, we'll attach the IPG which we have created here. Once we're done that, we'll proceed for the switch switch profile. Uh, first we get the switch profile under the switch profile we will select the leaf and after it we will attach the ipr which we created here once we done with this fabric access side policy configuration we move to the tenant under the tenant we create the new tenant under the tenant we will create the application profile in epg 
under that EPG, we will attach two things, BD bridge domain and the physical domain which we have created here. Okay, once we've done that, in the fabric access policy, also we need to do that VPC domain configuration. We will configure the two node leaf 101 and leaf 102 to be the part of VPC and, and logical pair ID will be the 10. So let's jump to the configuration. Here we are on the epic. Let's go to the fabric. Oh, sorry, let me quickly do that. The size also. Oh, it only. Okay. So let's go to the fabric. Under that fabric, we need to go to the access policy. Under the access policy, here we have an. Let me try to increase some size here. Okay, done. So first in the fabric, under the access policy, we need to proceed for the VLAN pool. Let's click on the right click on the wheel, create a VLAN pool. Let me took the name from the which we have solution document. So we have decided the VLAN pool name will be the infra and put in a name. And after that, we need to define a range. Range we decide 100 to 200. So I'm putting the 200 range. Okay. Done. And this is the static allocation will be there. Okay, let me select this option. Done. So we have created the VLAN pool. And now let's jump for the physical domain. Let me copy the name of the physical domain which we have added to the solution document. The name. So here in the physical and external domains, we have to go for the physical domain, not the L3 domain. L3 domain you use in the case of L3 or VOD. In the last video, we've seen. And let me copy paste the name here. So once this will ask for the here we have two option AEP and VLAN pool. VLAN pool we need to attach. AEP we still needs to be created after it will create the AEP. Okay. Now let's proceed for the AEP under this policies. Once you click on the policy under the global, okay. Under the policy, global policy, here is the AEP. Let's right click. And let me take the name for the AEP also on the solution document as you have seen. Put the name here, and here you're asking for the domain, and so we'll attach our domain here. Okay, so this domain we need to attach once we done that. Okay, we need to next and finish. So we have done, we have created the VLAN pool, then physical domain, then AEP. Once we've done that, we will proceed for the interface. Interface under that leaf interface, leaf under this is policy group. So here we need to create a Policy group, policy group for the VPC. First video we see how to create the policy group for the leaf access port. In the last video we see how we can use the port channel interface for the L3 out. Now we are going for the third option is VPC interface. Create a VPC interface policy group. Let me copy paste the name again from the solution document for the IPG interface policy group VPC infra. Okay, here is this is the important we need to attach a AEP like we did in the case of uh, leaf access port L3 out every and if we want to use any of the policy we can select like for this CDP I have not created the policy we can create the individual policy also I am calling the default policy here. Okay, after that next, next finish. So we have done with the IPG after that we need to proceed for the leaf profile. And let me copy paste the name for the leaf profile, leaf interface profile. This is the leaf interface profile we are calling. Here is asking for the leaf selector, select a port. So we will decide port one. Okay. So on both of the leaf, leaf one slash one zero one and uh, one zero two, we'll use the port ETH one slash one for the VPC. This will connect with the Windows server. As you have seen the topology here, I'm attaching the IPG which you have just created. Okay, once we're done with this IPG interface profile, we go to the switches. Here switches. Under that, here we have an a leaf switch. Here we have an a profile. So leaf profile we need to create. Create a leaf profile. Let me again copy, take the name. This is how important the solution document. That's the reason we need. If you create the solution document earlier, so same name we can use. So this can avoid the any mistake happening correct here we have to select the both the names we need to select now leave 101 102 as a part of this and then we need to do the update next finish okay 
under this once we done that profile this is the leaf profile you just created we need to just go down here under this associate interface lecture profile here we let as the ipr interface profile we have attached it okay so this we done okay after that we need to go in the policies under the policy here under switches we need to go and here you will find this domain which we need to configure let's get the domain first vpc domain let's do the right click let me get the name which we have decided vpg 101 and 102 so this is the name we have put it okay submit and after that here we do the virtual ports in a default here we have to attach the both of the our production group and putting the domain name both in the same thing id we, we have decided we use the 10 and after that we need to select the both of the leaf leaf 101 and here leaf 102 because these are the vpc peer devices we have selected so we have completed the fabric access side policy let's jump to the tenant side configuration let's go under tenant tenant let's create the new tenant in the vpc okay once we done that submit under this vpc tenant we have to go to the application profile this is the first option the tenant application profile you need to create a application profile let me take the name from the solution document again which you have decided right click application profile here i'm putting the name okay once we done that application profile we refresh it in the right we need to create the epg application epg now just wait application under this application epg we need to create the application epg let me put the name application epg name you have put it i think we can kept it default here we have to select the bridge domain so let's create a new bridge domain this bridge domain value again in the vlan range let's select pdi 101 as you selected okay and if you want to put in the vrf we can say here we are not using any vrf here else we can put the VLAN, vrf name also once we done that bridge domain that's it finish the bridge domain we have called after that is asking for the that's it there is one more thing it should ask it the domain no problem we'll attach okay so here we have an application epg under that do the refresh here we have an epg application epg and we need to attach this here here and this should not be here policy G policy journal let's go under tenant tenant let's get the new tenant in the VPC mm, okay once we done that submit under this vpc tenant we have to go to the application profile this is the first option under the tenant application profile you need to create a application profile let me take the name from the solution document again if you have decided 
right click application profile here and put in the name okay once we done that application profile we refresh it under that we need to create the epg application epg now just wait application under this application epg we need to create a application epg let me put the name application epg name you have put it i think you can kept it default here we have select the bridge domain so let's create a new bridge domain this bridge domain value again in the vlan range let's select pdi 101 as you selected okay and if you want to put in the vrf we can say here we are not using any vrf here else we can put the vlan vrf name also once we done that bridge domain that's it finish the bridge domain we have called after that is asking for the Let's it there uh, one more thing it should ask actually domain no problem will attach okay so here we have an application epg the dad do the refresh here we have an epg an application epg and we need to attach this we are here and this should not be here policy g policy journal 